Welcome to Henry Real Life and Politics. We are honored to host one of the top columnists in the country, Mr. Machari Agaido. He will explain to us a lot, but first of all, of all we are going to talk about the last election. What do you think were the main problems? Well, the last election, um, first of all, if we look at the presidential election, mm -hmm. uh, it was annulled. Mm -hmm. And um, if you go through the reasons why the Supreme Court annulled the election, mm -hmm. that actually explains what the problems were. Mm -hmm. And it is about, basically about a deficit mm -hmm. of trust that the Electoral Commission was not able to show that it had conducted a clean and fair election. It was not able to demonstrate that the, that the, that the count was done properly, that the tally was done properly. And, and that was basically it. There must be lessons to learn from that. And it's not just about technology. It is also about, uh, as I said, it is also about trust, which means we cannot go into an election where the participants do not trust the referee. On the other side, there was the political problems which are ever present in our elections. The tribal blocks, the violence, the foul language, you know, all, the, all those kind of things which divide Kenyans rather than unite Kenyans, which play up our differences rather than emphasize the, the strength in a, a diversity, what you see, the, the zoning of certain regions for certain tribes and, or communities and threats that so-called outsiders must vote this way or they'd be kicked out, things like those are a lot also to still learn from the 2007 elections which precipitated the, the, violence. the violence, the worst kind of post-electoral violence witnessed, ever witnessed in Kenya. Since independence, right? Even, before, even from before independence. Yes. Mm. In Kenya's Do you think there will be a repeat of the same problem? Let's say that there was a lot of fake news, there was a lot of uh, people even hired people to, to, to fire fake news at each other. So Fake news will not go away, but we are already seeing it. Uh, 2017, uh, we had the uh, kind of fake news propagated by hired yeah. guns like Cambridge Analytica. Anal Analytica. Yeah. There was some of that also seen in, in 2013, so it was not new. Mm. And even now, we are seeing it every day on social media. We are seeing fake newspaper headlines, fake magazine covers, uh, planted stories of all that you know all the all the i would say all the political players have employed dirty tricks campaigns and they are paying for it the problem is that it is sometimes difficult to know who is behind a particular campaign because there is, there is a there is a layer of they're not directly working under the campaign secretariat those are the dark arts they operate from the outside so sometimes it is very difficult to pin a particular piece of dirty work with the obvious person who is the beneficiary of that dirty work. And we have the same IEBC, the same problems. IEBC has a big, big challenge. Uh, the problems pointed out by the Supreme Court in 2017 have not been properly dealt with particular on, on the issues of uh, the technology, the collation and the transmission of votes and the tallying of uh, votes. Since 2017, the Electoral Commission has been trying to have some laws passed to deal with some of those issues. But Parliament has not been interested in having those laws passed. It is, not, it is now only now in the last leg six, seven months to the elections that they are realizing that we need to have these laws passed. And now that is creating suspicion and fear that somebody is up to something uh, funny. But they have a big challenge. 
uh, it is their responsibility to win the trust of all the contenders and to iron out all the things that need to be ironed out. For me, the biggest problem right now might be the technology because every day we are seeing, and we have seen that since 2000 and if I, since 1997, mm -hmm. since 2002, they are always late to acquire the equipment. the equipment needed to run a proper election. You need to buy all the voter identification, voter registration and voter identification kits, the electronic tallying and transmission systems. You need to have them installed, commissioned, and the staff trained. Today here, they have, if, even, the, even the procurement system is bogged down with the usual chicanery and the rivalries and, 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 the, power, and, and, the, and the brokers all trying to get a, a piece of the cake. Now, we had the case whereby in the last election there were these algorithms of the Farangas, whereby some candidates were just getting 54%. All the time the others were getting about 56 Even Uhuru actually was in that group and uh, the president. Um, it is true that uh, the way the results came in, where the gap remained constant between the leading candidates was very suspicious. It, was, it did not look like a, norm, like a normal algorithm because normally with counting of results and, trans, and release of counting of votes and release of results, they go up and down depending on which block, particular block has been counted. But remaining constant throughout is very suspicious. But this, pro this thing was not properly interrogated at the Supreme Court because the Electoral Commission was reluctant or did, did not do what it was being asked to do, which was to what we call open the open servers. The server, yes. I think open the servers does not yes. mean physically opening a cupboard. Yes. It means releasing the raw data yes. and they hedged and they dodged well, we hope that uh, this time they will be, they have learned. One of the things they are trying to do is to make it so open that the question of opening the servers will not arise because they will be open from the beginning. By counting manually or what? No, that any, that the media, the contenders, election observers, and any other authorized parties will be able to access the data as it is coming in. They will not have to wait for somebody to announce the results at Bombers of Kenya or wherever else the electoral uh, tallings, the National Tallying Center is. What about the new law? I mean, there is a new law that is... That, 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 that new law, I think, the people who are up against it, that includes uh, the main contenders, William Ruto and uh, Raila Odinga. I don't think they have read it. I think they are going on uh, fake news. Because what, and, and I think even the media here is guilty of not reporting what that law actually says and what it aims to do. The media, we have been reporting what politicians are saying, not what the law, the, the amendments actually propose. Those amendments actually intend to iron out some of those things, to create a more enabling environment for election reporting, a more transparent system for everybody concerned. So it's just the fear, I think, because before election... Well, I, I'm just fear. saying, it is good if Raila Odinga and William Ruto and every other presidential candidate and all the political parties take time to read those amendments, understand them, before going to condemn them or to, 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 to create room for suspicion. Then. Let us interrogate them. If they need to be interrogated, and they will always need to be interrogated, let them be interrogated on facts, not rumor and propaganda. Now, uh, we need to look at it now politically. Mm -hmm. You are looking at it technically. Mm -hmm. Now, there is the latest development, the earthquake. How do you see it? I think it fell short of an earthquake. Maybe it was a mild uh, tremor. Of course, it was significant in uh, Musalia Mudavadi joining the Ruto camp and that is the point 
He went to declare his presidential candidacy. At the same time, he's joining the camp of the person who is the obvious presidential candidate for the UDA and, 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 and that grouping. So where was the earthquake? If there was a person who benefited, it was UDA and Guy, Ruto. Yes, Ruto, yes. Mudavadi has shelved, is assumed to have shelved his ambition yes. and for which he will, he will be weaker than he was because I don't think he's going to be able to swing his voting block. For me, the earthquake would have been if Ruto declared a Musali Atosha moment, shaved his own ambitions, yeah, that's and said he will back yes, Mudavadi. Yes. That yes. would have been the earthquake, yes. not the other way around. What about uh, central Kenya politics? We cannot fail to ask you about that. Central Kenya politics is in a state of flux right now. It is a leaderless, it is rudderless, it is confused, it has no direction. Everybody is trying to find a footing. And uh, the, 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 the fact of the matter is that even in central Kenya, which is his, vote, his, his, his bedrock, Uhuru is now, you might say, his past tense. The voters are not going to, li to listen to his direction. And that is one of the unique things about central Kenya politics. The moment you are out of power, or on your way out of power, you're already a forgotten man. It doesn't matter how respected you may have been at some point. Uhuru is not a Raila. He cannot swing his people once he is out of power. In fact, he will be a nobody. Just like Kibaki, he was very popular amongst the, in central Kenya. But the moment he was relinquishing power, he could not influence the election in his own Odaya constituency. Right, yes, yes. Because people were moved on and said, do you are past tense? So they were looking towards another leader. The thing is that in this time in central Kenya, there is no heir to Uhuru. There is nobody who is standing out as a successor to Uhuru. Uhuru wants to remain as a leader of Central Kenya through the leadership of, by, by remaining leader of Jubilee. But the thing is that Jubilee is going to be a dead party. Even all the people who are right now with Uhuru in Jubilee uh, supporting, supporting uh, Raila Odinga's presidential candidacy under, under the Azimio banner. Each of them has moved to a different party or is looking to move to a different party, not Jubilee. They have revived DP, they have revived uh, PNU, all the other characters each have their own small party. But not, they're not thinking of Jubilee. That's they're not thinking of Jubilee. But don't you think cent in Central Kenya there could be a, a split between the young and the old? Because in Nyanza that split is not always very defined, but in um, Central Kenya, I think there is a split between the young and the old. There will always be that split, but there will, there will always be a split across generations. But there will always be so many other splits. If, even intra-regionally, intra where you find uh, uh, there is what you, what you might call Mount Kenya East and Mount Kenya West. There is the Mount Kenya diaspora in the Rift Valley. Then even within what you might call the Central Region, you will find splits between Muranga and Kiambu yes, yes, and Nyeri yes, yes. and so on. Those will always be there. It is difficult to tell exactly now where the each group will be turning to because everybody is looking around to see how they survive. How they survive. Survivors. And and let me tell you, nobody will be at a point will come when it is not about Ruto's survival or Raila's survival. It is about each individual politician deciding what is best for me Survive. if I am to capture a Senate seat, a National Assembly seat, an MCA seat, a governor seat, and so on and so forth, or to have hope of being in, getting a big job in the next government, whether it is a cabinet or parastatal or whatever. It is everybody for himself. So all those people who today are pledging publicly, pledging loyalty to either Ruto or Raila, a point will come and they suddenly shift depending on what, where they see the, 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 the balance of power is going to. What about the case of the two top ladies in Central Province? Girishi is a very local uh, politician, but maybe probably strong on the ground. Um, Waiguru cast a more, a more national uh, profile, but it's dirty and it's messy. And of course, you can see what has happened the moment uh, Waigoro shifted camp from the Raila side yes. to the Ruto side yes. and, and this, where, she, where she displaced yes. uh, where she displaced uh, Girishi. Yes. Now Girishi is out there sulking and training, going on her own. Yes. A lot of that will be seen, not just, um, not just in uh, Kirenyaga, but all over.
you are seeing, you are see, you are seeing in uh, Nairobi, uh, Bishop Margaret Wanjiro thought she's in uh, UDA, UDA yeah. and uh, the governor's Sakaja. ticket for Nairobi is out for the taking. Yeah. Now Musali has moved in with Sakaja mm. and Sakaja also wants it and she's, she, and she's running scared. It's going to be a very bitter war. Yeah, so there will, there will be a lot more split to come. Now, now depending on personal survival, nothing to do with supporting for either, nothing to do with backing either Ruto by, or Raila. By when do you think the political playing field should be leveled? Everything will happen with the nominations. Yeah. And, and, and there the, the is the party nominations, and then the final um, presentation of uh, of the nomination papers to IBC. And within that period, then. Everybody will have to decide where are they and where are they going. Some people will realize they are losing out in this party. They can't get a seat. They either move to another party or run as independents. But people will have to make decisions at that point. How do you see the situation in Coast Province? Coast, of course, again, there is a big battle between uh, uh, Raila and uh, uh, Ruto. Raila has been very strong in the coast over the last uh, 15 years. But Ruto has made some serious headway in that uh, inroads in that area but what i'm finding interesting is that the bigger battles are being fought at the local level where irrespective of whether one is in uh, the ruto camp or the raila camp it is about the fight for the senate in mombasa the fight for governor in mombasa uh, the, the same in uh, in uh, within some particular constituencies like vita and likoni and so forth the same also with the neighboring uh, counties where the fights are very, very strong, fierce in Taita Taveta, in uh, Kilifi, in Kuale. So it is the, 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 the fights are more localized. The big issue is that uh, a lot of politicians, they have been ganging up to form what they are calling a coast-based party to push the coastal uh, uh, agenda. But now that is disappearing because, first of all, all of them want to align themselves with either of the big national blocks. What about uh, in uh, Rift Valley? What do you see? Rift Valley is a very big province. It would be a mistake to talk of the Rift Valley as one, uh, it's no longer a province, let's say call it a region, the former Rift Valley province. Today, you might have, you, today we have what we call the South Rift, Central Rift, and North Rift. We have the various uh, we have the central Kenya diaspora within the Rift Valley, which is quite strong, particularly in, in Nakuru. You have Transoya, for instance, where, where, where Transoya County is almost an extension of Western Kenya politics. Uh, unlike in the days when Rift Valley stood largely under one camp, in the Moi days when you knew this is the Rift Valley politics, today it is splintered. And even today, Ruto cannot talk of being king of the Rift Valley. Because he's not king of Tanzania. He, he can only be king of yes. a certain section of the Rift Valley, which is what you might call the Kalenjin speaking part of the Rift uh, Valley. Uh, you know, his own, uh, you know, the Nandi County, Wasingishu, Kipsigis, and so on and so forth. Just to conclude, the most, uh, I mean, the one which is top now is mm -hmm. the Eastern, Kalonzo. Uh, Eastern is still evolving and uh, a lot is now dependent on where does Kalonzo go. Does he hang in there and run for president either independently or under the, 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 the One, Kenya, One Kenya Alliance banner? Yeah, yeah. And what right, impact yeah. will he have? Yeah. Will he make an impact? Or will the region largely decide to go either Ruto or, or Raila? Yeah. What influence will the likes of the Charity Ngilu, Kivuza Kibwana, uh, Governor Ezekiel Mutua have on the on the on that vote? And here we're talking about basically what you call Lower Eastern, the Ukambani. Eastern, of course, is three regions. You have uh, the mountain part of Eastern, yeah. which is uh, part of Mount Kenya, Meru Embu. Yeah. And then you have 
what you might call what you call uh, upper eastern isiolo masabit moyale which is which is a uh, in terms of its 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 um, makeup parts of it are closer to rift valley other parts are closer, closer to north eastern they split also yeah so they split also um, if you may can you what do you say about nyanza then Nyanza, I think, is a sealed, signed, and delivered for Raila uh, Odinga. I think, uh, in, in what we call his bedrock, Luo Nyanza. Luo Nyanza. Yes. Really, we're talking about 99% or 98% of the vote for him. But when it comes to the, the other elections, Governors, um, National Assembly, the Senate, you will find a lot of people coming in who are not under his umbrella. Some will stand independently or through other various political, small local political parties, but they're not under his umbrella. Or they might stand independently but still proclaim loyalty to, to Raila. Uh, what, 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 remain, what, remain, what remains most interesting is to see how Kisi will go. It has also voted largely for Raila in the last elections, and uh, there are signs that, uh, that uh, Ruto has made some inroads there, but it is yet hard to, to gauge the impact of, of his forays there. What about Western? Western is like Eastern in ways that uh, it is still unresolved on who is who, who goes where, uh, and, and where, 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 where things lean. If Musalia is not a presidential candidate, where will his vote go? If he is a presidential candidate, will he secure the biggest vote there and then be in a position to bargain post-election. So, um, the, his, his, his uh, earthquake has already seen a lot of his traditional base splitting. Uh, people who used to support him moving to either OD, M or parties affiliated with uh, Azimio. Uh, the same Thing, the, the same hemorrhage is hitting uh, Ford Kenya of, um, of uh, Moses Watangula. People are shifting out to the new thing formed by Eugene Wamalwa. Who, yeah, Wajino Wamalwa, of course, is uh, supporting Raila and Azimio. So a lot will depend on whether they have a candidate and if not, how their vote will actually be, be influenced. And Northeastern? Northeastern is tricky. Uh, it, 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 is, it has become very independent, unlike in the Kanu days when it always went with Kanu. Today, I think it is split roughly down the middle. And uh, you will find that in Northeastern, the voting pattern more mirrors local issues. Some clan issues or regional rivalries, rather than the bigger uh, national picture. Thanks a lot. We are very pleased to have hosted uh, one of our top columnists. The analysis given was among the best ever. We are also very thankful for the support of the Nation Circle Launch, and we are going to continue the partnership. Thank you a lot. Thank you very much. Yes. It is my pleasure to, 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 to take part in this, yes. and I will be available in the future for further conversations. We should. We should Thank do it again. Thank you. Thank you.